It continues to wave its flag as one of the respected names not just in the field of leathers and accessories but also in the whole world. Hello everybody, it's your boy Sean here and we're back again with another video with JC Sofines Vlogs. For six generations, Hermes continues to be led by a family of artisans who are ambitious, hardworking, and innovative. Now, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to present to you the story of a brand that is synonymous to the word luxury, the Hermes. For starters, let me give you a short walkthrough of the six generations of Hermes artisans who helped pave the way for the company throughout the generations. Before Hermes's flight towards absolute fame and greatness, the first generation Hermes who goes by the name of Thierry opted for a solid start by serving the needs of European noblemen with his saddles, bridles, and other leather riding gear. He was the founder of the use of the saddle stitch to which the company still uses to this day. With their high quality craftsmanship all in the supervision of Thierry, it won them many prizes and good reputation for the years to follow. Moving forward to the second generation, enter Thierry's son, Charles Emile Hermes, who made the pivotal move of the company's shop to 24 Rue du Faubourg Saint Honoré Paris, where it still remains to this very day. And I hope I pronounced that address right. <laughs> It is the company's global HQ. The third generation owner, we are now in the year 1922 by the way, is when Emile Maurice took hold of the company when Charles passed away. During his time, he was the person who started to produce fine and diverse additions to the Hermes products. Being that of sports-related leather goods, ready-to-wear clothing, watches, and gloves. Now, in the 1930s, moving with the family's fourth-generation owners, we have Emile Robert Dumas. He is the son-in-law of Emile Maurice, who is actually not a blood relative. But after Maurice's death, he took advantage of his ties with the Hermes bloodline through marriage. Eventually, his ascension proved instrumental at the fifth and sixth generation of Hermes, put them on the spotlight even closer. Now, on the fifth generation of Hermes, in the year 1978, the company was succeeded by Robert Dumas' son, and that is Jean-Louis Dumas, who transformed Hermes forever. He made Hermes into a luxury retailer and made the company public in 1993, turning annual revenues from 82 million US dollars to a whopping 2 billion US dollars. On to the sixth and current generations, we have current owner Pierre Alexis Dumas, who is the creative director of Hermes since 2010. A consistent level of ownership, pride, strong values, and a flexible financial strategy. These are only a few of the many reasons why after so many decades, Hermes still stands. But is that all? Of course, with that many years, Hermes had a few share of interesting things that happened to them. Now onto the bags. Did you know that the first ever leather handbag collection was created under Emile Maurice's time? It was one day in the year 1922 when his wife complained about not being able to find a handbag in all of Paris to her liking. And because of that, Maurice made her the best handbag he could ever create out of love. Talk about being a sweetheart. Generally, all of Hermes' goods are handmade, which came from scratch. From fabrics and workshops, which are all situated around France, their main goal is to guarantee a superlative quality and uniqueness of a Hermes product. According to sources, the amount of silk that goes into making 1,000 of the fabulous car's scarves inflates straight would cover the distance between the Earth and the Moon. It ain't no joke. Yep, they're that resourcefully capable. Every car the Hermes or car the Hermes, I hope I'm pronouncing that right again, is made from 450,000 meters of silk thread extracted from the cocoons of 300 moths from two mulberry trees. But what of their Kelly and Birkin bags then, you might ask? Well, the Kelly and the Birkin bag had quite a story to tell. Two of the most iconic Hermes bags ever are the Hermes Birkin and the Hermes Kelly. They were named after Jane Birkin and Grace Kelly, respectively. What only a few people would know is that the Kelly was not always by that name. The leather sack at the Peche was introduced to the world in the year 1935. However, in 1956, a photograph made such an impact on the world 
that Ermans themselves had to change the name. The photograph was that of Grace Kelly, the newly titled Princess of Monaco, carrying the sack of the pesh in front of herself to cover up her pregnancy. Meanwhile, the Birkin created after the Kelly, the idea was conceptualized by Jean-Louis Dumas, with Jane Birkin herself on a flight to London. These two ultra-premium and customizable bags, both Birkin and Kelly, have been a statement of class, wealth, and the more pristine sense of fashion among celebrities and fashionistas alike. But wait, before we get started on the next part, I would like to ask everyone to please like, share, and subscribe with JC's Home Finds Vlogs to be updated and posted on our contents and our uploads. Also, if you're looking for bag authentications, we are open for services with entropy. Now with that out of the way, let's move on to the next part. Despite these continuous rise to the top which seems endless in the year 2015, Ermes faced the wrath of the American nonprofit organization PETA, or People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, who, due to claims and reports, straight up confronted Ermes for practicing unethical treatment of crocodiles for their famous Birkin bags. A strategy to end the use of exotic skins by Ermes led to PETA's small buy-in of the brand's shares, which allows them to attend annual meetings and question the brand's practices. During this controversy, Birkin requested that her name be taken off the model entirely. But eventually things settled down and the iconic retained the Birkin name. Today, Hermes imposes on its partners the highest standards for ethical treatment of alligators, crocodiles, and ostriches, following the recommendations of expert veterinarians and local authorities. They even have an IFCA or International Crocodilian Farmers Association certification for hawk eye assurance that the animals they are using are safe and within ethical grounds. Now on to the last part before we end with the video is with Hermes's packaging which we find quite interesting. Did you know that originally they had cream color boxes with gilded edgings and mustard colors? It was only after World War II when Hermes was experiencing shortfall in the materials used to make the original cream color boxes. That is when they decided to make the switch to using the orange folded box method. That seems to have made a very lasting impression. Today, there are over 188 sizes of its boxes which are also, as you may tell by now, are really expensive. Without a doubt, Hermes is an ultra luxury success story. With its fair share of ups and downs and ups again, they have already amassed tons of recognitions, awards, and respect all throughout the six generations of their leaders and artisans. With that, we could proudly say that Hermes is an example of how success can last for a lifetime if families are willing to work together. Truly, families give you the roots to stand tall and strong. I don't have friends, I got family. And that has been our video for today with Hermes. Thank you so much once again for joining me on this one and I hope you learned something new today. You stay fabulous as always.